Okay, so firstly, uh, I'd still like to keep your hopes high. I'm Miss, not Mrs. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, so first take a good look at this picture. It's me only. Alright, take a good look at this picture. Do you, do you seen this picture in your childhood? Yeah? Classroom ke piche, turn the notebook around and our notebooks usually had this cartoon at the back, which we connected the dots, right? Yep, I mean, it gives me a very nostalgic feeling every time I see a picture like this, I immediately want to sit and like connect the dots. But for all of those of you who have played this game, did you ever think or question, why is this dot after that dot? Or did you ever try and go from number one to number 10? I'm sure some of you did that. But more often than not, we just trusted that, you know, the creator of this game has, knows what they have done, and we trusted, and so we joined number after number, dot after dot, after, until we reached our final picture, right? Taking from this analogy, guys, our life is not very different. Years ago, in 2006, I was introduced to the beautiful sport of rugby. That is also me, okay? Um, who would have thought so many years ago a bunch of people would have come to teach 30 to 40 kids a sport like rugby over three days of a summer camp. And then flash forward two years later, two tall, burly rugby players, coaches, come go to a school to, on a very, very heavy rainy day with a ray of hope, with a drop of hope that they can promote a sport like rugby in that school. There, they were introduced to two girls, 15-year-olds, very enthusiastic and very athletic. And 13 years later, one of them is standing in front of you. These dots in our life, they're nothing but situations, scenarios. Um, some of them are manifested, pre-planned, destined. And some of them are worked towards or planned. Now, this is all based on your mindset. There are some people who believe that yeah, life has to anyways happen, so might as well go on with it. At the end of the day, the king and pawn are going to go back into the same box. So if I, if I work hard, I'm still going to die. If I don't work hard, I'm still going to die. If I'm rich, I'm going to die. If I'm poor, I'm going to die. Why make the effort? And then there are some of us <laughs> who believe that, no, I want to go in this direction, and I want to go in this direction despite whatever obstacles. So even if there's a big a uh, stone in front of us, we will either break through it, climb over it, or run around it. But we are going to go in this direction. So there are two kinds of people, and nothing is the right or the wrong way. It's just a perspective of mindset. Now, what I want to do is take you through my life in very brief, because I only have that much time. I was born to a sport-loving family, okay? I have two elder brothers. Now, for those of you who have elder siblings, you do know that everything is a fight. Who holds the remote? Who sits at the window seat of the car? Who gets the last piece of pizza? And at what speed the fan is to be regulated at? All right? I hear the giggles. I know it. I have wrestled all my childhood, which is why I look like this. You saw that picture. I didn't turn out like this. <laughs> so two elder brothers. Then my love for games, for outdoor games, at a very, very young age. I was enrolled in a school with the best physical education teachers. I was spotted by one of them very early on that I had a talent in me for sport. So then he picked me up and then I was um, introduced to structured training programs very early on in life. I'm talking around 10 years of age I was about. Then I was exposed to many games. Through my schooling, I have, I have played all the sports possible. I mean, barring the ice and the snow-related ones, I have played all of them, all of them, I promise you. And also, at school for four years, I was one of the people who was a part of the theater plays. I was either the tree standing in the background, or I was the main role. I did everything on stage. So I got a foundation, and I was exposed, exposed to athletics. Then I got introduced to handball very organically, very, very organically. I was literally sitting by the side of a ground because I didn't have any practice to do. Handball coach comes up to me and says, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing nothing. 
He said, come be a goalkeeper. And that was literally the start of how I started playing handball. After that, I was introduced to rugby in 2006. And then I played for the state handball team for three years after that. I also ended up captaining the Maharashtra team. Then I was reintroduced to rugby. Now we are in our 10th standard. Kya karna hai? What to take? Science, arts, commerce. Should I still play a sport? Sport is still a hobby. But I want to do it. No direction. So when rugby happened, I was uh, extremely enthusiastic about going in that direction. And parallelly, I was encouraged and convinced to take up science. <laughs> Much against my will, very honestly. But because we are at that age where our parents still influence us, I said, OK, I'll take it on, no problem. So I took science. And again, parallelly, I got selected on the first ever Indian women's rugby team in 2009. Now I went for that tournament. And when I went to that tournament, I was exposed to the field of physiotherapy. And I was absolutely mind blown. And when I went there and I saw what that person was doing as a physiotherapist, I came back home and I not necessarily spoke about the game as such, but I told my parents that, Ma, I want to be a physiotherapist. So she said, OK, do some research on it. So I did my research on physiotherapy and it said you need 11th and 12th science. So I'm glad I took that, that step. Then I got, uh, I did 11th and 12th science, struggled through it very honestly. And uh, I got admission in a good physiotherapy college through my sport and my marks. And uh, <laughs> through my sport and my marks. And um, because it was, I mean, it's physiotherapy, it's not as glorious as it seems on field, you have to still go through four and a half years of uh, a lot of, lot of information. So I ended up failing a year. I'm just gonna pass that. And par <laughs> parallelly, I captained the Indian women's rugby sevens team. I got, I got an opportunity to do that. After that, I graduated, and now I'm standing at a stage in life when, uh, you know, graduation boss, degree mil gaye, now I have to make a, I have to make a, a a name for myself, career, okay, sport is there, I'm enjoying it, but it can stay on the side. Now I need to build a career base, I need to build a client base. Oath liya hai, no, I have to really, I have to do this, you know. So what ended up happening is, I started neglecting rugby. I started neglecting my training. Something that was, something that was here for me, I started neglecting, and I started focusing on this. And so, I mean, Clearly, because of my choices, I became unfit. I mean, I don't even want to show you. I didn't even put the picture of how fat I became. And I became unfit, and I went for a selection camp, and I got dropped. Now, that was very, very insulting. I, I was ashamed of myself and of my choices. And then I had a choice there whether, TK, now this is maybe the end of my journey in sport. This is all at the age of 24. This is the end of my journey in sport. Or maybe I should hang my boots. And my other option was, get back harder, better, faster, stronger. And I chose the latter. So I earned my position back onto the team, and I also became captain again. Now, I struck, uh, I've reached a point where I struck a balance between my work, my profession, and my passion. In time, gradually, I became the ambassador for Indian women's rugby globally, got invited to many forums to be a part of it or to speak at it. And again, parallelly, I have a stable work base at home. Now, what is the reason that I am sharing these things with you? I didn't play rugby and come here. I mean, there's close to about 12,000 people in the country who play rugby. That's not the reason why I'm standing here, or because I'm, I consider myself a good physiotherapist. I'm not standing here. There's something that happened in my life because of which has led me to this particular stage. It's very funny now that I think back at it. Okay, so about uh, maybe six years ago, an IT company, ironical, no? IT. An IT company called me over to give a talk about myself, my sport, and my journey. This was one of the first times that uh, any forum had called, uh, any company had called me to speak. So when they called me, they gave me a good advance notice about it. And uh, I thought that how difficult could it be to speak about yourself? My sport, myself, my journey. Okay, what do I say? I'll talk about myself. But guys, the excitement 
and the expectation was damn high. When I, was, when I stood there and I stood in front of those people, even the MD of that company came, made it a point to sit for that session because Captain, India, rugby, woman, something mind-blowing is going to come out of her. She's going to change the way our world functions. And when I stood in front of them, I didn't know what to say. I froze. And I froze because, not because I forgot about my life, but because I had no structure, I had no plan. I had never known about how to speak in public. And I stood there and I'm like, I'm Babi Svarucha. I play rugby. It's a nice sport. I captain the Indian women's rugby team. And I was a complete joke out there. And it didn't bother me what they thought about me. But for me, I didn't live up to what I should be. And that's when I got back home and I decided that now I'm going to learn about and I'm going to work on how to speak in public, how to stand on a stage and entertain a bunch of kids. <laughs> okay, so two TEDx's later, here I am in front of you today, still learning how to do this. All right, so pardon me for all the um, and ifs and buts and all of those. But all these stories, uh, analogies, there are end number of them to give you guys, end number, trust me. I mean, I could start from Rome was not built in one day, okay? There are all of these things that you know. But what is in this for you to take, all right? So now I'm gonna introduce you to my friend. So that is rug a rugby ball. This is what I, I, this is the sport I play, all right? And this game has taught me a lot of life skills. And for those of you who play sport, uh, you will understand that how important sport is in a life of a child, of an adult, of a teenager, of an old person, to just basically train for life skills. And I have made your life a little simple, simpler, by compiling all of the things that I learned in my life for you to take back today. Accept and trust, okay? Now, these five pointers that I'm going to tell you are the things that you will only probably reflect on when you're having a bad time in life because we never question why we're having a good time in life, right? We only question, yeah, why is this happening with me only? I don't drink, I don't smoke, so I'm going disease. Okay? So, these are the things that I want you to reflect upon whenever you're in a state of doubt, all right? Accept and trust. Accept that where you are in life, why you are there, is a consequence of your own doings. Now, this does not always apply. It, uh, people ask me, what in case of a crime? They didn't call it upon themselves. Yes, it does not apply then. But in personal spaces, okay, you need to accept that where you are at, you have been responsible for where you are. It's your choice that has led you to be there. And trust that this is a very minuscule dot in the cluster of dots in your life. And that in the larger picture, this will make a lot of sense to you. Number two, grab opportunities. Grab opportunities that come your way. Okay? These can be shifting to a new town for education, shifting to a new town or a new place for settlement. It can be getting a new job. It could be that one internship that will not pay your bills, but will give you a heap load of experience. And you want to take, just take that plunge and grab that opportunity, because the reason why I'd encourage you to do that is uh, we oftentimes feel that, what if I, if I don't succeed in that? Well, if you do not succeed in that, you'll come back to the dot at where you are at and know that that path is not meant for you. And now you'd be in a state of awareness that, Nah, this is not meant for me, as opposed to, what if I had? Number three, work very, very hard, guys. We oftentimes reach a dot or reach a plateau in our lives, and we believe that, now I'll retire. We feel it at every phase in our life. That now I've done my best, and now I'm, I've achieved what I have to, now this is it for me. No, keep working hard, keep improving yourself, keep, keep being better at what you do. Work hard every single day. It's okay to slack off, it's normal. 
we all get take weekends, we all take getaways, we all take vacations, right? It's okay to do that. But it's also important to stay stuck to what is your goal. Now, a myth that I would like to put to an end here, that growth does not mean success, or success is not your only parameter for growth. In my opinion, failure, knowledge, and experience are your other parameters where you can define for yourself whether you are growing or not. I mean, whether you'd like to accept it or not, all the speakers here on this forum have failed at some point in their life, either once, either repetitively, to master what they are at. And finally, my most favorite point, influence the outcome, okay? Now, taking you to personal example, what is the outcome for me? Winning a tournament is the outcome, all right? But do I have control over that? I don't have control over that because I don't know what the other teams are doing. I don't even know what my own teammates are doing at home, whether they're doing their practice or not. What is in my control and what I can influence is my personal fitness, my mentality, my mindset, okay? How, I, how good am I at playing my sport? What I do to influence the outcome is train hard every day. And then maybe I can hope to win that tournament because now I've done everything in my capability. So what can you do to, to influence outcomes in your life? Number one, work on your personality. Guys, trust me, it is a, it is a game changer. You see all the speakers today, you see all your world leaders, they have a personality. They have something that before they even talk, the public is like, Let's listen. And then you grab the attention, and then whatever you speak is going to make sense to them. So work on your personality. Second, gain as much knowledge in your field as possible. You need to know A to Z about it. I mean, kudos to Susan for the amount of information that she holds. I mean, she was talking about Turkey and Spain and everything, and I was just like, what? <laughs> Shit. I mean, I'm Unbelievable, right? That's how you want to be. That's where you want to be. You want to be the best in your field. You want to be the best at what you do. And only when you are best at what you do, all the other things as winning, awards, felicitations, applauses, are all some bonuses. This is me, Babis Barucha, signing off.